the least thing we have to worry about in our country is protein deficiency. The big thing we have to worry about is protein excess because not only does the body chase out calcium through the urine, but it chases out magnesium, zinc, iron, phosphorus uh, through the urine too. It minerally depletes you to be on a high protein diet. And not only do you lose the minerals, but you also lose bone structure. Now, Dr. Ralph Nelson, who is Associate Professor of Nutrition at Mayo University, Mayo Medical School, uh, and he works with the dialysis group at Mayo Clinic, tells us that he's seen 20-year-olds that have been on these high-protein diets, a steak for breakfast and so on, already with kidney damage. Athletes, 20-year-old athletes, sort of a tragedy that the high-protein diet has been so misunderstood as to damage kidneys already at 20 years old with our athletes. Now, a high-protein diet has nothing to say good for it, and yet think of all the weight reduction diets. These are high-protein diets. The Atkins diet, the Stillman diet, the Scarsdale diet, and a good reason for these diets uh, is that they do lose weight. And how do they lose weight? Well, they do it very simply. The high-protein diet is only about 75% efficient as far as becoming, going into calories. Almost one-fourth of the protein goes into waste products. We call these ammonia products. It's the same ammonia as you have in smelling salts. If you've ever smelled ammonium smelling salts, you know that it's a pretty, uh, pretty strong material. Well, I can tell you that the ammonia is poisonous to your body cells, too. So the first thing that the body does is convert that ammonia byproduct from protein breakdown into what we call urea nitrogen and uric acid. And these now have to be gotten out uh, of the body so the body doesn't become poisonous. And that's the principal constituent of urine. Uh, that's where the term comes from, from the urea nitrogens and the nitrogen waste products from protein waste. Now, on a high protein diet, the problem is that the problems, again, are so toxic to the body, the body must dilute them with a lot of water to reduce their poisonous effect. It takes seven times as much water to dilute the problems of protein uh, digestive breakdown per calorie than it does of carbohydrates or fat. So that with that much water required, and if you're on a high protein diet, you can lose five pounds of weight in 24 hours. How do you do that? Well, you lose four and a half pounds of water to wash out all those poisonous products and maybe a half a pound of tissue weight. So that's why those in high protein diets have almost an immediate weight loss in 24 hours. They've dehydrated themselves. Now this is sort of a tragedy that children had. It used to be that infants and especially premature infants had these high protein milk formulas like soy milk and so on fed to them. And these infants would die in two or three weeks of dehydration until they found out what the problem was. So that you certainly don't want to, for all the many reasons, be on a high-protein diet. Now you may say, well, if I can't be on a high-protein diet and I can't be on the high-fat diet that I'm accustomed to and I can't have all that sugar in my prepared foods, incidentally, people say, well, how can I have so much sugar in my foods? I don't see the sugar. Well, you know, Jell-O has 85% of its calories in table sugar. Uh, the tomato sauce on a pizza you, that some of you had a week or two ago, the tomato sauce has 50% of its total calories in table sugar. There's table sugar in peanut butter. There's table sugar all over. It's all hidden in prepared foods. Now, there's no question about the amount of sugar eaten in our country and fat. 